It's Grief Chiller Killer Countdown. Ten days of Halloween, ten days of body horror. Tonight, the 2017 horror comedy, Cuso, starts now. Cuso is the directorial debut of the music artist Flying Lotus, and it is without a doubt one of the strangest and most disgusting movies I've ever seen. I'm not exaggerating either. This thing seems to intentionally offend your senses at every possible chance. It's the type of movie that's hard to describe whether it's good or bad. Cuso just is. Apparently it had a record number of walkouts when shown at the Sundance Film Festival, and I can't even blame the people, this movie is wild. It begins with a news report explaining the setting, which is a post-apocalyptic Los Angeles after a mysterious earthquake hit it. Since the earthquake, people have mutated and all manner of strange things have happened. The movie is an anthology featuring four stories that are all as revolting as the next. These stories are broken up and cut between each other in the movie, but for the sake of confusion, I'm going to explain them separately. The first story, Royal is about a couple in their bizarre sex life. Only a few minutes into the movie and we're greeted with a sex scene that ends with the man smearing his own splooge on both his hands and his lover's face. Yeah, great start. The woman is weird about being touched, especially around her neck where she has a large concealing bandage. It's revealed that under the bandage is a strange talking boil which disgusts the man. Most of the segment is the couple arguing about it and it's just so weird. It definitely has some Eric Andre vibes as everything, especially their performances, is it's just off and strange. It's hard to explain. Well, eventually the segment ends when the Boyle performs an oral act, let's say, which he enjoys so much he decides he's okay with his girlfriend and her Boyle and names it Royal. Yeah, if that isn't a big enough what the fuck for you to stay tuned, it only gets worse from here. The next segment, Mr. Quiggle, mainly follows a rapper named B who lives with two interdimensional beings, played by Don L. Rawlings and Hannibal Burris, two great comedians who play these characters hilariously. They basically bust B's chops constantly as they sit around and watch TV. Although it's worth noting that anytime we see what they're actually watching on the TV, it appears to be a snuff film. Anyway, B finds out that she's pregnant and that the father is her downstairs neighbor, played by Tim Heidegger. His head just appears out of her toilet covered with shit. He then gives a really disturbing monologue in a way that only Tim Heidegger could. While well, she decides to go to a clinic because she doesn't want to keep it, and this is where we meet Manuel, a young man who comes to the clinic for some unknown reason. One of the weirdest scenes in the movie is his conversation with the blow up doll receptionist. It feels like they just told him to improv this entire scene because it's just a one way conversation and it feels made up on Do you the think spot. It'd be cool? Can I get a crabby fit? When the he sits down and has a conversation with B, where he convinces her that she should probably tell the father before going through with it. In the meantime, we figure out why Manuel is at the clinic. He has a fear of boobs. Yeah, so he goes in to see the doc, played by funk legend George Clinton, I'm not even kidding, and in order for him to cure his fear of breasts, he lays on the ground under the doctor's bare ass, where he must freestyle a song that'll coax a giant bug creature out of the doctor's rectum and spit a strange juice onto him which causes a psychedelic experience. I mean, what the actual fuck? It's like some kind of depraved game of Mad Libs. Meanwhile, B tells the neighbor about the baby and he demands she keep it. Then the two interdimensional creatures appear and put him into a music video of B's where he's tortured. I don't know, it's really weird. The segment ends with them pulling the fetus out of her belly and throwing it at her where she suggests that they smoke it. I mean, I, I, I don't really have any more words on that, so let's just move on to the next segment. This one, titled Smear, follows a schoolboy or grown man with the features of a boy. It's kind of hard to tell. He lives with his domineering mother who makes him disgusting food that gives him diarrhea. He goes to school, which is a strange shack in the woods full of mutated school children who are taught by Anders from workaholics. Anyway, he ends up getting diarrhea in class and soaks his pants and seat. The teacher and students mock him and he runs out into the woods crying. This is where he finds a strange butthole looking creature in the woods. He then takes his fecal matter and smears it onto the creature's tongue, which causes it to transform growing a motionless head. It then shocks him with some green beam that seems to give him some kind of knowledge or power. Eventually, he feeds the creature dog poop instead of his own, and this causes the thing to vanish. Yeah, so I mean, interpret this as you will. It's definitely one of the most visual and cryptic segments. Finally, we have Sock, where a woman seems to be living underground and constantly whining about her baby. Eventually, a godlike voice tells her she must sacrifice her baby, and she climbs down a large hole. She wakes up with her leg attached to another woman's leg, 
as if the woman is being worn like a sock. It's worth noting that much of this movie was co-written by David Firth, who you may know as the demented creator of Salad Fingers and other popular animated series on YouTube. You can recognize his handiwork here as there are a lot of animated segments in this film that often serve as transitions between the different stories. Another interesting collaboration is that of Brian Tesler and Jonathan Bacon, the duo behind Cool 3D World, which is another surreal YouTube channel. Their style is present in a lot of the film as well, including Manuel well's weird psychedelic boob trip. So that's Kuso, one of the strangest films I've ever seen and definitely in the top five gross out movies ever. While it is disturbing, it has such a comical tone throughout and the effects are so over the top that it's not really scary, but rather just shocking. As far as the body horror goes though, this is a great example because every second of the movie is filled with it. I would say this movie by itself features almost every possible variation of body horror you could come up with. While I did cover most of the main story beats here, there is easily just as much stuff I didn't cover. So if you're really morbidly curious and you think you can handle it, check out Kuso. Mr. Quiggle. Mr. Quiggle. Mr. Quiggle.